Hey there, everybody. It's Chris Smith. Thanks for joining me this evening. Uh, in our uh, discussion forum, I threw up a post uh, on the board about expectations, uh, specifically what, what kind of expectations do we have in terms of profitability as traders and uh, whether those expectations are, in fact, realistic. And it sparked off a pretty good discussion. So tonight, what I've done is invited Mark Sebastian to join us, and Mark is going to talk to us about the types of expectations that are often established among the retail trading community, and what is realistic and uh, what perhaps may not be as realistic. And um, with that, I'll remind you that tonight's presentation, as with all of the presentations we do here, are educational. They are not intended to be trading advice and should not be considered as such. Uh, and with that, Mark, if uh, you're ready, we'll uh, get this thing started. All right, let's go. You got the recording started? Uh, yeah, recording is started. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, everybody. So it's good to good to see everybody. For those of you who don't know, my name is Mark Sebastian. I live in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I'm an explore trader, uh, and I am now a uh, educator, private investor, and uh, I run a magazine called Expiring Monthly. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things that I started this kind of education firm. One of the things I really wanted to do was to really do things the right way. You know, you hear so many just complete nightmare stories from all sorts of people uh, about, um, you know, just about every scam out there. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that option education is a scam, but definitely there are some very nefarious people out there. Okay, some very, let's just say, boisterous salespeople, if that makes any sense. So to start out, I actually had a, 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 a contest that I thought was going to be kind of fun. All right, last week during the uh, AM Pit Report, I announced the contest. See who could send me the most ridiculous email marketing spam. All right, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of look, look through some of my favorites that I got. Because, you know, I get these all the time. And you know, I, I you know, I end up clicking through them, but there are, uh, you know, they obviously get sent to somebody, and I don't think that many of us really have taken the time to read some of these things. So I thought this would be kind of fun. We're going to start with just kind of checking out a few things. So uh, this was actually the least offensive one, all right? And this was from InvestorsObserver.com, and uh, you know. This was more just, uh, you know, I just thought it was kind of funny, and, and it wasn't. They don't make any real ridiculous claims. So, although they do do the scary stuff with Social Security, starts sending not out non-negotiable IOUs. You know, there's definitely some scare tactics, but in the the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, and they do offer up to triple the returns, which is kind of funny. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, I've definitely seen worse, you know. All right, so here's the next one. All right, this is how to short sell your way to profits of 101.7%. Um, I love that they used the, they, they brought in the granularity of the, uh, the decimal point there. I think that was, uh, one, that was one of my favorite, favorite things. Um, and uh, what a great name, Doug Downers. So, uh, I mean, that's just a great, great name. But uh, I don't know about, uh, I, I, listen, VectorVest has some, some good things, okay? But um, I don't know that it makes a lot of sense for them to be short sell offering to short sell your ways to 101.7%. Uh, but still, believe it or not, this isn't even kind of the bad stuff, all right? Right now, we're just in kind of the that's a little silly mode. Okay, uh, so this is the trading shortcut. 
Um, <laughs> my assistant was putting these together, and she liked the guy that the guy's name is Manny Backus. Um, you see, Manny's brain is a high-powered computer. His IQ is off the charts of 157. Okay. Will I please supply? Somebody said, "Would I please supply the web addresses of these places?" Um, you know, so in one hour of trading, you can make more money than most people do slaving at a dead end job all week long. Yeah, you can do it. Will you? Mm, probably not. But uh, Manny Backus can. <laughs> Manny Backus. So, but Manny Backus makes uh, twelve up to twelve fifty. All right. Notice it says up to, up to twelve fifty, in just fifty nine nine minutes or less. Okay. Uh, I think that's a little uh, getting a little silly. It's a trading shortcut. All right. Uh, you know, here's a nice one. This is uh, sign up now for uh, hot picks coming next week. Okay. Um, I think that's a, a little funny. You know. Normally, when uh, if, if I told some of my buddies to sign up for hot picks, they would be thinking something else was coming to their email. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know this, this is just you know I love that they don't give you the name of the stock. Um, that allows them to kind of just trade, 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 and they don't tell you how many of these stocks they they send. You know. Um, So they don't tell you uh, what, what stocks they pick and how many they pick. So I think this is, you know, we're starting to get, get there, all right? Hot picks on the way from pennystockpicks.com. All right, well, it's .co, so they're, they're foreign. All right, now, here's one. Earn 10 to 1 on your money on every dollar of your trading fund, okay? Every dollar, okay? So... If you start with ten thousand, you can grow it into ten a hundred thousand. If you start with a thousand, it can become a thousand. All right. And then the funny thing is, is he has like this uh, these unsolicited comments, and they're absolutely it's like great, wonderful, cool, you know, awesome. I mean, who knows when those were were done? So I thought this was kind of funny, and I don't know why she kept his face in, but uh, you know, he could do himself a favor not putting that in there. <laughs> Uh, all right, now, hey, these guys, here's a couple of good-looking chaps, right? Um, so they're having a blast helping investors like you average 105% on profits. I like the little, uh, the little slash there, as if the orange didn't catch your eye. So, and I love the power ties. So, you know, but you look at these guys, I would totally let them date my daughter. You know, they're, those are a couple of good-looking guys. Um, so we took some profits 30, 35 days later for a 320 percent gain. All in all, we have closed 14 trades since starting big money options in June, averaging 105 gains on every trade. All right. Uh, as hedge fund traders, we don't often get to rub elbows, elbows with investors like you. Our days are filled with computer screens and phone calls from big money clients. It's a great life, but in a way, we've been enjoying this new project even more. All right, if you think that these are these guys are real, okay, I would be really surprised. All right, me thinks me smells male models there. Okay, that's that's my theory. I don't think Nick Atkinson and Andrew Houghton exist. That's my theory. So. All right, nine money doublers in four months. Here's how, and you you know the the more the more like shockingly explosive the email marketing campaign is, the uh, uh, you know the less I believe it. So, you know, but I'll give him credit here. All right, he actually lists uh, the uh, some actual companies. All right, doesn't give you the trade, but Hey, he lists the actual companies. Now, notice there, no one ever lists a, lists a loser here. Did you ever notice that? See, I think this is my favorite one. All right, 500percent.com. 
where they offer 500% returns. Um, I think that is uh, that is probably my favorite my favorite name for a website. So happy Mother's Day, Fafa! Stop forcing mom to give an Academy Award level performance. By now you should know that she really hates those soon to be wilting flowers. Buyer, buyer, five hundred percent dot com. <laughs> uh, but no, this is this. We're getting more. We're starting to get into the real ridiculous. Now I think this is our winner. Okay, because not only do they claim the, the I, I think my favorite thing is they they claim a hundred percent accuracy. You know, so everyone was right without exception. And then in there it says out of 150 trades, 147 were winners with just three losers. That's an accuracy of 98 percent. Well, right there they're off by two percent. And I have a theory that. Uh, uh, that he's not going to be uh, hitting 100 percent all the time, just a little theory, folks. Okay, so this was actually our official winner, and uh, this was our second place, 500percent.com, and 100 uh, percent accuracy in 2010. I'll be emailing you tomorrow for your prizes. Uh, you're each going to get a $25 gift certificate to. Oh, I forgot. Um, oh, here's more of that. Uh, 100% winners strategy. So, um, and then he, actually, this was one more that I really liked. Um, so, imagine owning Apple, RIM, and Google combined for a dollar share. Now's your now he, here's your chance. In a six billion dollar industry with over 234 million customers, AVVC rec could return. It could. 1,978% profits by August 1st, okay? Am I the only one that wonders where they came up with 1,978% profits? 1,978? Like, why not 1,979? Why not 2,000? I mean, where do they come up with that number? You know? It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a little funny. I think. So, anyway. So, marketing. You know, I always wonder who bought into this junk. All right. These ads are tacky, cheesy, and poorly put together. All right. They're basically designed only to grab the gullible. And this is actually one of my jokes. Uh, you know, did you know that gullible is not in the dictionary? Seriously, look it up. <laughs> Uh, I did that to one guy. One, I did that to uh, a guy in my office when I was working at Merrill Lynch as an intern, and uh, he comes back to me all proud and goes, "Gullible, easily fooled." And then closed his dictionary and looked at me all proud. It's one of the funnier things I've I've seen in my life. But uh, no, you know, most of us don't consider ourselves. Most of us don't consider ourselves gullible. Okay, but you know, many newsletters, you know, system traders. Purveyors of easy money are far more subtle, all right? Instead of telling you that they can make you easy money, what do they do? They tell you, you can make easy money, all right? They tell you, you don't need to understand the hard stuff. Follow our plan. And, you know, my favorite is, same, uh, is trade the same way every month, okay? Just, you know, ridiculous things like that that just don't make sense, okay? You know, the pro problem is everyone likes to think that they are above average intelligence, and only about half of them are right, you know? So anybody else get that joke? Everybody thinks that they're above average intelligence, half are right. Uh, so, you know, the problem is, is that we all kind of, I mean, and I am absolutely guilty of this, all right? The fact is, is that one of our easiest human characteristics to play off of is our own uh, you know, I think Sigmund Freud would have called it the id, the super ego, the uh, the ego stuff like that. You know, the uh, we all love ourselves. We all have confidence in ourselves. Many, you know, um, you know, lines like "I'm not going to make you money. You are going to make money." Playing off of that is a very powerful weapon. Okay, and that's what a lot of these people are doing. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Okay. 
trading is simple, all right? You know, the fact is, despite what everyone is telling you, that um, they don't have your best interest in mind, all right? They want tuition. They want brokerage. They want your money. You know, I, I'm, you know before we get on to the tuition portion, um, I was in, I'm not going to mention the brokerage platform, but I'll tell you that I, could, I bet you many, many, many of you use it. Okay? When I was starting Option Pit, I sat down for a meeting with these guys. And they said, uh, you know, I was talking about the fact that I really don't like the way the industry is pitched, that, you know, there are people out there teaching everybody how easy this is and that anybody can do this. And the broker, one of the very, very heads of this company, stopped me mid sentence and said, yeah, but we want people to think that. Okay? Think about that. All right? Why? Well, they want your money. All right? Brokers platforms um, want you to trade. Okay? You know, brokers platforms, I love a lot of these guys that, 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 that uh, a lot of these speakers are really dynamic that work for the brokers platforms. But they don't really teach very much about when not to trade, do they? All right? And then, um, you know, others want tuition or a newsletter fee. Um, now, I'm not saying all newsletters are, sc are scammers. There are some really, really good, reputable ones. I work with a couple of those guys at Spiring Monthly, and I'll tell you they are extremely reputable. Okay? But others are not. All right? The fact of the matter is, is telling people how hard this business is, is bad for business. Okay? Trading is hard. Okay? One of the ways I, one of the ways I like to talk to people, all right, is this. Imagine I was a financial advisor, and I said to you, I, you and I have the exact same amount of, of option knowledge, okay? Okay? Give me your money and I'm going to go trade it, all right? If you wouldn't let that person trade your money, you shouldn't be trading your money, okay? Think about that, all right? Let me tell you a little bit about my training. Uh, when I started with Group 1, in New York, uh, we started out with 22 traders in uh, New York, 20 guys in Chicago, 10 in Philadelphia, and uh, seven in in San Francisco. All right. In the New York class, we had a bunch of Ivy Leaguers, a bunch of uh, you know, generally smart people. Seven of seven of those 22 got it onto badges. Four of us were trading a year later. All right, so you know that's still a twenty percent win rate, you know, a little under twenty percent, but uh, certainly not something that I would call easy. All right, and these are some of the best and brightest, and me. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. All right. So now. Uh, what are realistic expectations? This is where oh, I think a lot of people get thrown off. Okay, what are realistic expectations? All right, we've established that trading is hard and you have to do a lot of work. All right, what are realistic expectations? All right, there are there should be no general statements. Okay, there's no this is realistic. This is realistic. I think this is realistic. All right. The, the, the truth is is that it depends on the trader. All right? And here's the rough news. And I'm sorry to tell you this. A lot fail to turn a profit net of education and commission. And a good chunk of you guys will lose a lot of money. It's just the facts. Okay? Sorry. Um, but that's just the way things are. Okay? Now, that, that does not mean that education is a waste, okay? But it maybe means that you may have to consider education something else besides the automatic, you're going to become a trader. 
returns. I hear a lot of crazy, uh, crazy claims. Now this is an article that was um, written about one of my direct competitors. Okay, and this was a quote from him. I blacked out his name, um, but I, I thought that the quote in itself was profound because I, there's just no way this is true. When traders are man, when trades are managed, not just put on and forgotten, says a tr uh, says a trader can jet blank, says a trader can generate as much as 100% annualized. Some may scoff, he says, but he sees his best students doing uh, his best that uh, students doing it, grinding out 15 to 15 percent per month. I love that he uses the term grinding out, like making 15 percent is grinding it out, okay? 15 percent is freaking killing it, okay? Not everyone does this, he says. Others make 7 percent, and those who can't follow instructions lose. No, you know what? I, yeah. They, my guess is is that the those who fo can't follow instructions category to this guy is a lot bigger than the 15 to set and seven. Okay, this is a load of hooey. Okay, so I hear five to 15 percent. Okay, I hear four to five percent. I hear two percent a month. What is realistic? The answer is it depends. But I'm telling you, it ain't five to 15 percent. Okay, so get over it. All right, so I thought, you know, let's mess around with 5 to 15% returns. And just for giggles, all right, I threw in an average. I actually went to the low end, all right, and I threw in what the return would be if you average 6% a month, okay, over the course of a year. All right, and I did simple, and I did compounded. Now, compounded, if you do 6% a month, that's a 90% return, okay? 90%. If you do um, simple, that's a 66% return, okay? Let's take a look at 90%. Remember those unrealistic emails we were just looking through? 105% profits, earn 10 to 1. He's up 101.7%. Starts to sound a little ridiculous, doesn't it? Now, does that mean you can't do 90% over a given period of time? No. But over the long haul, no way. No way. Okay? All right. So, you know, the answer is, you know, imagine if I plugged in 15%. What do you think this re return would be if I plugged in 15% annualized? It would be somewhere north. It would be almost 200%. Okay? I mean, it's just uh, straight up impossible. So the answer is 6% is not realistic. However, you know, maybe over a period of time, you know, my buddy Matt, who's in the Army, used to say, uh, you have to pay the piper, all right? We all have to pay the piper sometimes, okay? I had years, where I had a year where I had to pay the piper even when I was trading. Took a nice hit, okay? We all have. All right, when I was on the floor, I did really well for a long time, and then, you know, you have one year where you, you get beat, or you have a month where you get beat bad. You know, I can tell you stories of losing a hundred thousand bucks. Heck, I can tell you story of losing seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay, but I can also tell you stories of making, you know, just to my defense, I can tell you stories of making a lot of money too. All right, but 
the truth, what my point is, is that we all have to pay the piper. All right. So what if we had a few month, uh, negative months, those data sets? All right. Now, all right. So if we do six percent return, and then we add four months where we lose ten percent. Now we're starting to look at something that's realistic. Now, look at the return on that simple on the simple rate. You make two hundred dollars. Now this doesn't include commissions, remember folks. After I'll bet you that two percent once you take out commissions turns into a loss. If this is net of commissions, congratulations, you returned about what a, a one year CD will return. Maybe a little better. Now, 16%, hey, that's nothing to complain about. You beat the S&P 500. All right? But instead of 5 to 15% a month, this ends up being more like 5 to 15% per, per annum. All right? Annual. What about 1.5%? Okay? You could average one and a half percent, okay? Now we're dealing with something that, that again, maybe makes some sense. Okay? Even, you know, 17 percent, 18 percent, that's a, I mean, that's a really good return in a given year. So, why do they tell you guys that you should make 5 to 15% a month? All right. I've heard that number is from actual money put to use, not portfolio. Maybe that's what they meant. All right. Okay. So, um, so you know, why do they tell you that 5 to 15%? Well, they're lying. Okay. Why do they tell you that? They're lying. Now, I've definitely heard the argument that, you know, well, maybe that's 10% on my trades, okay? Well, if you invest 40% of your $10,000 account and make 10% of a month, you're dealing with about a 4% per month, okay? So even that would be a little inflated. You know, I think a realistic number, if somebody said to you, you know, it's shooting for 5%, on your investable, on the money you absolutely invest, okay, on a monthly basis is a realistic number, all right, which comes out to about 2%, which is still, as you can see, based on one and a half, heck, I mean, that's a nice compounded return. It's not a bad simplified return. And that doesn't include any losing months. You'll have losing months. So are these guys liars? Mm, I don't want, you know, I would say this is a lie. I don't want to call them liars. Um, I would say they're definitely, this is definitely intellectually dishonest. You know, you'd be running one of these firms, and, and I see it, you know, you hear a lot from the guys that do well, and you never hear from the people that do poorly. Okay? And you know it. Okay? But that doesn't mean that all of your students are doing that well. All right? Maybe there was a time... Maybe there was a time when premium was a pretty simple game. All right, maybe there was the premium selling game. Maybe that maybe it was. Well, you know, when a lot of people started thinking this was cool was in 05, 06, 07, before things blew up. All right, the market was stable. IV was going lower and lower. And the other thing is, not as many traders were selling these spreads. Okay, since iron condors have become kind of a more popular trade. Okay, or iron butterflies. You know what? You know the individually we can't do anything, but if thirty, if you know thirty million people at once sell premium, um, 
you know, then then maybe uh, you know maybe uh, maybe that's one of the issues. Okay, but you know my real theory is maybe there wasn't a simple time. Okay, maybe there wasn't. Goals, all right. So you're saying, what is a realistic goal, all right? My tell every single one of my people, your goal in your first year after you pay me, all right, after you pay your commissions, after you pay everybody, try and beat a bank account. All right. Try and beat a bank account. Okay? Now, after that, all right, what's your next year? Hey, it depends on your one performance. All right, where are you? Hey, it might be to be a bank account again. All right? It depends on your risk tolerance. It depends on your knowledge of trading. All right? Some people, I know this is going to sound shocking, all right? Some people are really smart. Some people are smart in different ways, but maybe not in kind of math and statistical analysis. Okay? They're going to learn quicker. All right? And then market factors, of course. Goals. All right? If someone actually gives you an answer when you ask, what return can I expect, run away from that person. I mean, run. They are bad, bad, bad news. So what is reasonable? Okay? You know, 1% a month on a, would, on average, beat the assumed average return of the S&P 500. Think about that. All right? Now, most people don't beat the S&P 500. That up puts you ahead of, of those people. 2% a month would put you at the target return of most of the very, very, very successful hedge funds. Three percent would put you well into the top one percent of all traders and money managers. You would be huge. All right. Can I make a living on fifty to a hundred thousand dollars? Probably not. Okay? Sorry. I tell most traders that if they want to live off their trading, they need they not only need portfolio margin, but they probably need it to be well all above the threshold. All right? Between three and five hundred thousand. All right, many need a million depending on their lifestyle. Okay? To generate five thousand a month. Okay, fifty to one hundred thousand dollars is probably not going to cut it. If it is, you are taking a, some major, major risks. Is there any hope? You may be asking yourself at this point, why should I bother? Okay, why? All right. You know, the answer is you should learn to understand options whether you become a full-time trader or not. All right? One, used properly, they're a far less risky asset than stock. Okay? And they can improve along your ability to trade long stocks or short stocks or anything. Okay? It is a major thing that you can improve. On top of that, it will help you figure out which of these money managers are full of crud. All right? I mean, if you if if I told somebody 
that if you, you know, I can teach you enough where you can talk to a financial professional and figure out whether they know what they're doing, that is a major advantage. You know, a lot of people get into these scams that where they're buying mutual funds or, you know, different types of annuities or not that all annuities are bad, but, you know, uh, you know, what's it, uh, just these, these things where somebody's selling you a product and they're not really teaching you anything. So it is, uh, you know, th there's some value there, okay? You know, I tell people when they sign up for my service, you may pay me $4,000, 3900 to be exact, okay? So that in a year, I tell you that this is a bad idea for you, right? But that is money well spent, okay? Now. I have an expensive service that charges 9000 bucks, but you know what type of people I take in that service? People that know what, is their, what they're doing. All right? The number one way you can improve your returns, all right, let me get to this, is to lower your education costs. Right? But over time, you know, maybe longer, you know, you know, over time, maybe longer than you want, you can get to three hundred to five hundred thousand. You can. All right? But it's longer than you think. All right, this is the last chart I'm gonna show you, I promise. All right, and then I to close I am gonna discuss something kind of interesting. Um, because I heard some people talking about a zero sum game uh on the message board, and I want to show you why it's why options are not. Okay? Um, so here's the last chart. All right. So if you start out with eighty thousand bucks, and you can get an average return of thirteen percent a year. All right, in twelve years, actually eleven, or at the end of your eleven, twelve years, you'll have over three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, compounded. All right, I'm sure that's a lot longer than people want. All right, but you notice, even at two hundred seventy thousand dollars, two hundred seventy thousand dollars is only producing about thirty grand in return. Hey, you know what? If I uh, took my dad's Money. I took eighty thousand my dad's cash, and I said, "I'm going to return you eighty thousand bucks. I'm going to return you thirteen percent." He'd be stoked. I think most of you would. So, is there any hope? No. Most traders will not average thirteen percent managing their own account. However, I do view this as kind of an attainable goal. Someone trading over $80,000 is at about 300000 in 12 years. If I'm planning on retiring at 60 and I'm 45, I have a shot. Maybe not a good shot, but I have a shot. Okay? What now? All right, ways to maximize your return. All right? Find a consistent approach to trading. This is a big difference from consistent trade. I want to be very clear there. What? My wife's. Yeah, well, I am. Um, consider education as part of your trading costs. Factor them into your returns. And I'm an educator telling you that. All right? Be pound wise and penny foolish. All right? Many traders get so angry about the small stuff and do not concentrate on the big stuff. I mean, it's really crazy. I hear so many people complaining about commission costs. They don't pay attention to what they use to analyze their trades. You know, they don't pay attention to how good their execution is. Instead, they worry about their commissions. That is pound. That is penny wise and pound foolish. It's the other way around. Learn the right way. 
All right. Anyone that tells you you don't need to know that, all right, either doesn't understand the subject, is lazy, is a crook, or is a combination of all three. All right. I'm going to close on this. All right. You need to know the hard stuff. I'm really sorry, but you do. All right. So in summary, some claims are funny. In truth, they're a little scary. Some returns do not make sense. Some returns do. If you're going to tell people what to expect, they're probably a liar. And you have to learn the hard stuff. All right? All right, now I'm doing a class with your trade monster. Just, you know, just a pitch. Um, it's a four-part. It's on using ETFs. We're going to get into some cool stuff. I'm going to get into the volatility products. I'm going to get into um, the metals, and I'm going to really get into kind of managing and trading ETF spreads. It's 299 bucks. If you use the code CSMITH1 for Chris, I'll take 15% off. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, I think it's money well spent. All right, I think it's, I'm really going to put a lot of good stuff into this class. So, uh, you know, you can go to optionpit.com. Um, and, uh, you, you know, here's all the different ways to get a hold of me. All right. And, uh, you know, I'll take questions now. And then if you want, one of two things. I actually, rather than, I actually wrote up an example for expiring monthly on how options are not a zero-sum game. All right. I wrote up a big example on it because this was a huge discussion that got sparked. All right. Now, options on their own are a zero-sum game. But if somebody is trading an option and the other person is hedging an option, they're not a zero-sum game. So I wrote up a big article on it. And uh, if you email me, mark at optionpit.com, I will send you uh, a copy of that article, and you guys can look at how options are or are not a zero-sum game. All right, do we have any questions? Hey, Mark, uh, a couple slides back, you, you made a comment about um, consistency. Yes. And I, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, find a consistent approach to trading versus from a, a consistent trade. Can, can you amplify on that and explain the difference? Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, a consistent trade is this. Every... Every expiration cycle, when it's 45 days to expiration, I sell an iron condor, right? That does not work, all right? Statistically, it doesn't, okay? You'll end up making uh, the equivalent of the risk-free rate over time. Um, consistent approach is every expiration cycle between... 60 and 40 days, I begin to watch for iron condors to trade, and I look for these specific conditions that, where, that are favorable to enter an iron condor. If they are there, I trade it. If they are not, I do not. Okay? Just like buying a stock. You know, I buy Apple because I like its fundamentals and this and that. I don't buy Apple because I don't like its fundamentals. All right? Believe it or not, there's such a thing as fundamentals of options. And it's volatility, skew, term structure, um, all the things that actually drive the pricing of options. The same thing that makes one car more expensive than another and makes a car really work is the same thing that drives op option trades. There is legitimately such a thing as a more favorable and a less favorable option trade. Okay, One of the things I always tell people is that, you know, the general public likes to say that they don't have an edge. That's not true. They do. It's their ability to initiate. Use it. One of the other things I, I wanted to bring up, because I, I know we'll have uh, some questions about it, I'm sure, is the idea of people taking a $5,000 account and doubling it in a mm -hmm. very short period of time. Right. 
And uh, maybe you can comment a little bit on the difference between trading a $5,000 account versus a $100,000 or $300,000 account. I mean, there's a huge difference. Um, you know, in the end, uh, something, it's C. Smith 1. Somebody said, what's the uh, discount code? I actually have to go plug that in. I'm going to do that right now um, just because I love Chris Smith so much. Yeah. You know, think, if we think about it, nobody likes to lose 5000 bucks. okay? But there's a big difference between losing $5,000. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually a, pain, a psychological effect, all right? If you're not afraid of something, you'll do it. Okay, and if you are afraid of something, you won't. And when people start seeing those six digits and they start really trying to trade large amounts of capital, okay, the the fear factor starts to enter in. The Joe the Joe Rogan effect, I like to call it. You know? And everybody has their own threshold. But when you're trading your own money, okay? and risking a hundred to three hundred thousand of your own money the pain involved of losing that money all right the pain of potentially losing that money is enough to stop you from ever making fi that five to fifteen percent doubling five thousand is simple if you're not worried about losing five thousand bucks you'll w the w you know you may be willing to let it ride does that make sense Yeah. The, and the other aspect to it is, let's say, you know, you, you see a stock that is really going to move. And you go out and you buy an option for five bucks. You just invested by buying one option. You just, in, you just put 10% of a $5,000 account into the market. So you, mm -hmm. you allocated 10% of all capital by buying one option in, the, in, in, in that market. Let's say the open interest is 20 contracts. Mm -hmm. You're going to get in and you're going to get out probably without a lot of friction. Oh, right. Yeah. But there is that. But if you got a $500,000 account and you want to put 1% into it, right? Mhm. Mm you, you know, the the scale starts starts affecting things especially if you're trading something that's a little bit thin in terms of the open interest. Yes, and, there are certainly um, there's certainly some scalability issues. Yeah, and it's one of the right. it's one of the issues uh, large mutual funds have, and why they have so much difficulty beating the S and P, is that if you're you know an enormous behemoth of a mutual fund, to take a position that has any meaning in the context of your portfolio, you got to buy a uh, just tremendous amounts of stock and well, you're going to have management fees and yeah and um, commissions and different things like that and the other fact of the matter is is a lot of those guys managing big money you'd be surprised how unsophisticated they are Chris yeah no I'm, I'm here I'm, right. I'm nodding in in a agreement yeah but, you'd be surprised yeah. So, so anyway, you know, if you're if you got a small account and and you're knocking you know some solid trades out and and you've taken five thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars, I I don't find that surprising, and I don't find it absurd, um, because it happens. Well, I, I, yeah. Oh, I agree. But the the way it's waved out in that it's scalable to a a two hundred an eighty thousand dollar account or a fifty thousand dollar account even. Right is uh, a little ridiculous. Yeah, it does. It doesn't work once once you add size to it. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, what hap what happens is what what I see happen is that people who start trading the five thousand dollar account and see success, either they see mm -hmm. that success kind of start moderating because now they've got more size to the account through either their success on the trades or your their addition of, you know, they add capital to it. Well, the other thing that happens is mm -hmm. they continue with the same aggressiveness with the larger account, and, and they, they bust it. They bust their account. Right. Oh, tons. I mean, I've seen a lot of people want to 
you know, scale up in crazy amounts and then um, not uh, and 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 just blow a ton of money real fast. So, you know, that it's it's a really dangerous game, and you have to th you know, one of my one of my guys is a really 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 good hedge fund trader. Okay, and he was like ecstatic about his April, and he did 3.1 percent after his costs. So, you know, I missed the website. It's uh, uh that's it's uh, so, um, you know that that's uh, th that that just goes to show you kind of. You know, if he did that, he would be one of the best traders in in the country, you know, consistently. So, yeah, I mean, does anybody have any questions about this? About uh, you know, any of this? I'm sure it, it was not a fun conversation to have, but um, and I feel like it's it's high time somebody does. <laughs> it's high time. So. I, I see a couple posts about uh, you know the, the educator claims and and uh, you know, the the only thing I've got to really you know, add to all that you know it's fun to look at the ads and and it is and and kind of you know make fun of it and and that sort of thing, um, but you know the flip side of it is you know I got into options back in two thousand one two thousand two. And I've learned a great deal of information from different educators, uh, mm -hmm. you know, o over the years. So, you know, I hesitate about saying, don't go get educated. And I don't think that's no, what Mark's and, saying. And my, one of my very big points was that you should get educated. Absolutely. And all, all we're saying is, you know, you got to take these, you got to separate the marketing from the reality and and you got to get kind of sober about you know what what is it that I'm really going to try to achieve because if you go mm -hmm. into a trading scenario where you're going to try to take and I've I've talked to people who literally have $10,000 are sitting in a hotel conference room or ballroom you know at a weekend seminar have never traded a stock in their life but are convinced that on Monday they're going to walk in, quit their job, and be trading full time their, with their ten thousand dollar account and in the knowledge right. that they gained over the weekend. Right, and, and that's you know, just nuts. If, if you, right, and if you've got ten thousand in your name, does it make sense to spend sixty five hundred on, on an options education course? You know, or seven thousand, or even thirty nine hundred. You know, like mine. Maybe not. So, yeah, you know the the one um, thing I'll I'll say about that is you know if if you if, if you've got what ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you know you're not going to learn options over the weekend. No. And and if if you're serious about doing it, even if you don't have a a large portfolio, but you know that this is what you want to learn and this is what you want to do. I don't have a problem with someone who, who really has kind of thought about it and wants to do it. Right. Taking the money, investing it in the education, continue. Mm -hmm. But the, here's the key. you gotta, you got to have a savings discipline. Continue saving, yes. setting aside the capital, not, not trying to trade the two or $3,000 that's left, but try to rebuild that, that account. Because let's face it, if, if, you, if you're good at savings, Make it, you know, setting aside five grand is is not. I mean, that that's not like a lifelong task. No, no, I I, I see your point there. No, I, I think it's great if you see it as a long term educational goal. If you know, there's no such thing as too much education. I do agree right. with that. Because I got to tell you, I went um, to four years of college and three years of law school, and I didn't have a heck of a lot of money saved. And uh, no, no, I agree there. But but the the point is is that. Um, you know, I, I think there's more. Uh, if you see it as a long-term thing, it makes a ton of sense. But if you're one of those people that thinks 
I'm going to pay this and I'm going to take the rest. I've got 15000 and I'm going to spend 7000 on a course and I'm going to turn that other 8000 into a career. You know, that, that, we've got to avoid that. That's what you and I are kind of in the business of trying to convince people is a bad idea. What we want people to do is to have a realistic idea of, you know, attainable goals and realistic goals and to see education for what it is, a real value. All right, but, but a but something that you have to see as a long-term thing, not a short-term thing. If you don't have if you don't have money, like I said, I do think education is important. Okay, obviously, I wouldn't run an education company otherwise. All right, but I don't think that if you want to be a full-time trader right now, if you have ten thousand in your name and you're going to Seven thousand, ten thousand on a course, it's a good idea. All right, that that would be kind of my point. Yeah. Um, you know, what, so, you have to look at it in the context okay. of the business, and and if you're going right. to wipe out thirty five percent of your trading capital in order to take a, a course, you know, you, you got to have some kind of plan to replace it. And, exactly. and that plan needs to be realistic and, and make sense in the context of what and you're well, trying you, to achieve. And really, and really, you need to have a plan to make that, that probably that dollar amount a lot more than that 10000 bucks. You probably need to have a plan to make that 100000 bucks, 200000 bucks, or whatever, you yeah. know? So, by the way, Mark, thinking uh, long -term. they're asking, what, where, do, where do you go, what website do they go to to, to sign up for your ETF course? Optionpit.com slash events. Optionpit.com slash events. So, so, yeah. So anyway, right. yeah, the whole the whole purpose of tonight and and the whole purpose of the the discussion forum thread I started was was to kind of just get everyone, you know, focused on, you know, what what is it that we can realistically hope to achieve. And not get carried away with a lot of the um, popular myth. And mm -hmm. you know, the reality is, you're going to have the trades that are that return 100 percent, or 200 percent, mm -hmm. or 500 percent. But you're not going to get those every week. And uh, and I, I think even if you sign up for some of the newsletters that that promise you those kinds of trades, you might see one or two of them come through. But they're mm -hmm. going to be kind of buried in there with all the stinkers too. Yeah, and uh, and that's just the nature of the beast. Is is that you know it's it's like uh, baseball. You know, it's a, guy, a guy will get up there and hit a home run, and you'll remember that home run, and everyone will talk about it the next day at work. But there were a lot of strikeouts that that took place in order for him to get there. So. Um, I'm seeing a few. Uh, uh, where can I find out more about Expiring Monthly? ExpiringMonthly.com. Uh, my phone number is my cell. Or this is uh, our 800 number. It goes right to me. I can answer that. It's 888-TRADE-01. If you want my cell, it's 630-862-1152. Someone said, do I teach a class about weeklies? You know, interestingly, on Thursday, I'm doing, for 10 bucks, I'm doing a one-day look-in into my, into Option Pit. And we're actually going to live trade, and we're going to talk about the weeklies versus the regulars, because the regulars are essentially going to be weeklies this month or this week. What is different? What's the same? Okay, and we're going to really dig into that. Um, and I've done other weeklies in the past. So, um, and I'm seeing a couple other questions here. Um, someone said, using the same image yet, is this... The, Someone's asking: Is using the same instrument uh, every month, every month, to practice the art of moving in and out the spread and calendars? Well, if you're using the same instrument, sometimes that interest instrument is going to be a bad idea. All right. Um, here's what I would say. All right. If you are a new to option trading, all right, Chris Smith offers one of the best beginner option courses out there. All right. And um, if you are looking to go to the next level, I think Chris would agree that I probably offer one of one of, if not the best, approach to 
you know, giving you the tools where you could potentially become a full-time option trader is the way I like to put it. You know, like I said, I have no problem telling you this is a bad idea. All right? And you should be happy I'm doing that. All right? And yes, my wife just goes, you're scary. Um, <laughs> so... Um, someone said the option in education industry is, uh, is, for the most part, a marketing meat grinder. That's what the major part of it. So, I feel uh, so-called options education company feed people easy, fast money, and that's all money up front. Yeah, that you know that's an interest. It's interesting. Someone said my goal is to make money, but is not to make money, but to learn not to lose it. Um, that's a Chris Smith quote, and I think that's a great quote, Smith. Uh, Chris. Yeah, I like that so, one. So, yeah. Do you yeah. have different and, programs? Uh, is that information on the site? Yes, I do. It's uh, optionpit.com. All right. If you go to optionpit.com, right there, that will give you any information you need about us um, at Option Pit. I do a, a, a nightly blog tonight. I am, as soon as I get done here, I'm going to finish up my piece uh, on. Where, how uh, pricing models fall apart, and uh, that, I think that'll be interesting. And I, I write a daily blog every day. I do lots of information. So uh, come to our website, optionpit.com, and uh, please give me a call, and uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about just about anything. I think anybody will tell you that I'm always willing to answer questions and talk to people. So uh, check me out. All right, so you guys go check out Mark. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of hope the discussion continues on our board because it's been the most interesting thing I've read in, in a little while. It's been, it's been great. It's been great. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's kind of fun to see people actually get kind of fired up about it. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, it really is. Uh, well, so we know, go, go ahead, Mark. Oh, well, you know, this is a – there's not a lot of people out there. It's me and Susie Orman out there giving realistic and you I guess giving out uh, realistic approaches <laughs> you know I want to be like you should not be buying a watch with your money <laughs> yeah well it's funny because I was, I was thinking of knocking on CNBC because you know they have their options uh, was it options oh, yeah. action and yeah. uh, in it, 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 I mean you know, there's only so much you can before do, you, do before with you blast a. That too much, before you blast that too much, there's a chance I'm going to show up on that show a couple of times. So. All right, well, <laughs> we'll knock on you when you do. But, <laughs> Please do. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, it's, no, what were you going to say? I, I, I was just say, good, uh, I was going to say because they they put out these. I mean, they're not wrong ideas. They're just they put out the, these very simple trade ideas in in they make it seems so simple and so easy and like you're going to make just this tremendous amount of money and and you sit there and you watch and you're like yeah if any if anyone's spent any time trading options you know it's not like that and uh anyway it's it is what it is and so it's not just mm -hmm. you know it's just not not just the uh guys selling the courses you know the the, the mainstream media now is in in the action they they want to make trading, whether it's options or futures or anything else, they want to make it sexy in order mm -hmm. to generate the interest. And well, yeah. Well, you know, they need, they need, you know, CNBC is a bunch of cheerleaders. They're not, they're not news reporters anymore. You know, that's what I would say. Yeah. I, I don't know that they ever really were reporters. <laughs> I like that. You know, uh, I, I I agree. I couldn't agree more. Well, you know, I like uh, you know who you know who was a, a good guy is uh, Santelli. I was going to say I like Rick, I like Rick Santelli because he gets fired up, yep. and and, well, uh, and, he, and he speaks the truth. Yeah, no, I I I don't disagree with much that I hear him say, but uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, John John Dory says he should make Aaron know, Burnett okay. and Melissa Lee dress up as cheerleaders. Yeah. Well, Aaron, Aaron Burnett's leaving, I think. Or no, uh, one of them is. So, um, yeah. No. So. It was a good, good presentation, Mark. Thanks for uh, spending Thanks. the time with us.
I, Chris, I, I, I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm really glad to, uh, I'm really glad to be working uh, that you uh, invited me on. I hope you have a, uh, a great day. Yeah, well, yeah, glad, glad to have you. And by the way, shoot me your uh, expiring monthly article. I want to read that one. I will. I will. All right. All right, you guys. All right. Good evening. Uh, if you want to watch this again, it's going to go up on the video archive, and uh, I'll send out an email when it's up, but it should be up probably this weekend sometime, if not sooner. So good night, Mark. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care.